Here comes carbene, CCl2, having deficiency of two electrons. We'll ask for electron. Electron will come into the orbital of carbon. Carbon and this carbon, carbon of this ortho position and carbon of this carbene will start to make a bond. What happens then? There will be a bond between carbon at ortho position and carbon in chloroform. Like this. Now this carbon is getting an electron from outer source. So this carbon will start to gain a negative charge. Look, charge will always be conserved. If there is a one unit of negative charge in the system, after the reaction also there has to be a one unit of negative charge. And we understand why carbon gains negative charge because it gains outermost outer electron from outer source and the charge proportionally did not increase into the nucleus. So there will be a net negative charge. Hey, but look, this aromaticity is gone. Aromaticity. Remember, aromaticity provides is the biggest factor in organic chemistry. It is a factor which provides most important factor in providing stability to the system. It is a most important factor in considering the pathway of the reaction. The reaction pathway which provides aromaticity is the one that is followed. The reaction pathway that destroys aromaticity is the one that is not followed. Here aromaticity has gone. Aromaticity if that goes momentarily for intermediate that is that can be considered, that can be accepted. But aromaticity cannot be destroyed. Now here the phenoxide was aromatic. Here we are considering an intermediate that is not aromatic. Here it is not aromatic. If the reactant was aromatic, the product is bound to be aromatic in normal circumstance. Because the reaction is occurring for stability and aromaticity provides the highest amount of stability. So destroying the aromaticity, you cannot get more amount of stability. So aromaticity has to be restored. And look here what mechanism we have for restoring aromaticity. There's a hydrogen on this carbon. There's a hydrogen on all these carbon, we don't show them. There's a hydrogen on this carbon because carbon's valency is 4. Here it was shown to be 3. The fourth is with hydrogen. Now, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Now this, uh, this RS I have drawn wrong because there's a negative charge and uh, okay, now that's right. This is right. There's a negative charge on this oxygen and there's a negative charge at this ortho position. Peace. It's right. Now, the, 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 the way to restore aromaticity could be, you have to bring a pi bond at this position. Now, pi bond can be brought at this position if this carbon gets involved in making the pi bond. Now, this carbon can be involved in making the pi bond if it breaks one of the bond because all the bond here seems to be sigma. So it has to break one sigma bond and then it will make one pi bond. So pi bond, if it comes at this position, then the aromaticity of the ring will be restored. So what happens here is, to, the driving force is the restoration of aromaticity. So there is intramolecular acid-base reaction. So this carbon loses hydrogen and this carbon gains hydrogen. So this carbon acts as an acid and this part acts as a base. So this lose hydrogen, so H plus will be transferred from this carbon to this carbon. So what happens is, if hydrogen migrates from this carbon to this carbon in the form of H+, plus, then this carbon, already having negative charge, will form a bond with H+, plus, and it has two chlorine. But this carbon, where it lose H+, plus, will gain a negative charge. Right? Now, intuitively, you can guess what's going to happen. This negative charge will go undergo resonance and this negative charge, alternatively, leaving this carbon, is going to come on this oxygen. When that happens, there's a pi bond at this position. This negative, this carbon positive, there's a pi bond and then this oxygen again gains a negative charge. Rest of the two pi bond in the ring will remain as it is. And this oxygen gains a negative charge. So, aromaticity is restored and you can feel relieved. So here it is. Now what's going to happen is you have more of KOH present into the system and those KOH are going to do simple SN2 substitution. 
that hydroxide ion is going to come on this carbon and the Cl- is going to go out. We have studied this SN1, SN2, E1, E2. There will be simple SN2 nucleophilic substitution. OH- is going to do a backside attack and this Cl- is going to come out. So if that happens two times, you are going to get this. Two chlorine are going to go out and two OH are going to come in. So you have gem diol. Gem diol meaning you have two OH, two alcoholic group, two hydroxyl group on the same carbon. From gem dichloride you have gem diol. When you have a gem diol, this is something that we have seen lot many times before. What happens is water molecules comes out. Water is thermodynamically very stable. Water is a very, very stable solvent. Water molecules are very good leaving group. They leave the substrate very quickly as it is doing here. So this carbon get breaks one bond from here. This oxygen breaks one bond from here because the hydrogen is going. And this carbon breaks one bond from here because oxygen is going. This carbon is devoid of one bond. This oxygen is devoid of one bond. And they both will make a bond with each other fulfilling their valency. So what will happen is there's a hydrogen on carbon like this and the, this carbon and this oxygen are going to make one more bond. There's a bond one, one bond already between them and a new bond is going to be formed between them because both the atom are losing one bond. So to fulfill their valency both will make a bond between themselves like this. Right, so to draw it properly and to make our product look more smart, I'm showing it like this. This is the same as this. Right, so now you have uh, an anionic form of salicylaldehyde. After the reaction is complete, you'll add proton from outside and then this will be neutralized and then you'll have salicylaldehyde. This is rimer timon reaction, right? Mechanism you should draw. Mechanism you should able, be able to write by your own hand. You learn here, you note down the mechanism and then you try to do the whole mechanism all by yourself. If you don't do this, then there is a high chance in an exam you will not be able to deal or cope up with a little twist of these kind of problems. Because competition is very high. Seats are less, students are more. If any other person does it and you don't do, then there's a high chance that he will he will zoom past you in all kind of competitive exam you will sit together. This is Rimer time and reaction, reaction number five. Let's quickly do reaction number six, and that will complete the method of preparation of aldehyde. 